वेलकम वंस अगेन टू द क्लास एक्चुअली आई वाज टीचिंग बट देयर वाज सम डिस्टरबेंस सो आई विल हैव टू रिकॉर्ड एवरीथिंग वंस अगेन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट अ फ्रेश ओके सो अल्फा स्कैटरिंग मेथड लेट्स मूव ऑन टुवर्ड्स दिस इफ इन केस यू हैवंट वाच द प्रीवियस वीडियोस ऑफ न्यूक्लियर एंड पार्टिकल फिजिक्स देन गो टू द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन एंड आफ्टर गोइंग टू द लिंक इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन जस्ट स्क्रॉल डाउन आफ्टर यू स्क्रॉल डाउन you will reach blue thumbnail okay so start from the very first blue thumbnail and uh, watch all the episodes of uh, pre previous lectures and then after that you come back to this class then you will understand everything otherwise if you have already watched everything then you can surely continue from here okay so again one one of the superficial topics alpha scattering method for determination of nuclear size okay for method is for determination of nuclear size now this method okay this method is given at two places in your physics optional syllabus so this method is given at two places in your physics optional syllabus in classical mechanics also it is given and in nuclear and particle physics also it is given so here you have to study it in detail which i will teach later on but over here it is superficial okay now this is the thing the other thing the other thing which is important is that you have you have only okay you have only classical treatment of alpha particle experiment in your physics syllabus okay quantum mechanical treatment is not there in your syllabus so remember this thing quantum quantum mechanical treatment of alpha particle scattering is okay so you have only classical treatment of alpha particle experiment you have only classical treatment of this experiment in your syllabus quantum mechanical treatment is not there in your upsc physics optional syllabus okay 
so this thing you have to remember while studying this now what happens in alpha scattering experiment is that you basically bombard a, an alpha particle now what is an alpha particle what is an alpha particle this is your heavy gold foil for example rutherford took gold you can take any heavy metal nucleus heavy metal where z is your what atomic number so z number of protons are there and charge on each proton is e plus e so z e is the total charge of this nucleus heavy metal nucleus and alpha particle is coming from here what is alpha particle it is he2 positive ion he2 positive ion means helium nucleus you know this very well that two protons and two neutrons constitute helium nucleus and helium atom looks something like this that it has two electrons in it okay a neutral helium atom what is this this is a neutral helium atom okay it is, this is a neutral helium atom but after you remove this electron and this electron by providing ionization energy what happens is that it converts into he2 positive and as soon as it converts into he2 positive you are left with the nucleus only you are left with two proton and two neutron containing nucleus okay so this is the alpha particle which is called as he2 plus or he2 four whatever you want to call it so what happens is that when this positively charged nucleus interacts with this positively charged alpha particle there is electrostatic force of repulsion between them and due to this electrostatic force of repulsion between them uh, this alpha particle will come along a line actually i have shown it like this but it it is one it is getting scattered at 180 degree okay alpha particle is coming like this means it is coming like this and going back on the same line on the same line it is going back so i am showing you 180 degree uh, uh, reflection okay so it is getting repelled and it is getting diffracted back at uh, scattered scattered back at 180 degree it is scattering back at 180 degree but uh, over here i have shown it like this okay in the form of a u i have shown so the reason for showing you it like this why i have shown it like this is that in order to represent it better okay so it is actually 180 degree scattering but uh, in order to represent it in a better way i have shown the path like this okay so actual path which uh, the alpha particle will follow will be a uh, hyperbola okay it will be like this okay the path which an alpha particle follows is like this okay it is a hyperbola but uh, over here as we are taking the simplest simplistic view of this method so in order to take the simplistic view we have taken it like this that 180 degree angle we have taken so that our view the the problem becomes simple so what happens is that due to uh, some velocity will be there uh, this alpha particle will have some velocity at this point and its velocity will keep on reducing until it reaches zero over here and then due to the repulsion of the nucleus it will start moving in the backward direction okay it is like a spring as if there is a spring attached over here so if there is a spring attached over here the block will come and uh, uh, due to the repulsion the, due to the back force applied by the spring the, the block will start accelerating in the opposite direction right so similar is the case here there is there is an invisible spring of invisible spring of invisible spring of electrostatic repulsion okay so uh, this this is uh, your uh, distance of closest approach what do you call this this is basically your distance of closest approach or critical distance because this is the closest distance at which they will be 
after uh, all these distances which you will measure uh, along the path other distances for example this distance this distance all these distances will be greater than this b so b is your what distance of closest approach okay so your alpha particle will be accelerated from here it will it will be it will come in the form of a beam it will keep on keep on tracing this path okay it will keep on tracing this path and and then due to the repulsion of the nucleus it will start decelerating okay it will start retarding and after it starts retarding it will reach, reach to a zero point where it will stop uh, it will stop for a moment and uh, again due to the spring block system type mechanism spring block system type mechanism it will again start moving in the backward direction so in this way you can understand this so let us write the theory over here so what will happen is that initially when these are very much far apart okay initially when this nucleus uh, when this alpha particle and this nucleus are very much far apart okay suppose they are at 1 meter distance suppose imaginary distance we take 1 meter so this 1 meter distance is so huge that uh, these tiny particles this plus z is a tiny particle and this alpha particle is also a tiny particle in front of this 1 meter 1 meter length okay so suppose they are 1 meter apart then there will be no potential energy between them because there there will be zero uh, interaction between them no interaction because of infinity distance as compared to their size 1 meter is infinity distance so there will be no interaction between them initially but uh, as soon as this alpha particle starts approaching closer to the nucleus there will start a attract there will start a um, interaction between them and after the interaction starts the alpha particle will start losing its kinetic energy and potential energy will start increasing then at this, at this point there will be maximum uh, potential energy okay and after that again kinetic energy will start increasing and potential energy will keep on decreasing until it becomes zero okay so we will write the kinetic energy plus potential energy at this point and we will write the kinetic energy plus potential energy at this point and we will basically try to solve some uh, we will try to get a rough idea of the b what is your b b is basically your radius of the nucleus okay b is equivalent to your radius of the nucleus so let me undo some things over here okay oh it is gone okay leave it so let me draw once again it is like this it is v equal to 0 over here this is your this is your plus z e this is what this is your b okay this is your what alpha particle this is your half m v not square this will come particle will come and particle will go like this all all these things i have already explained to you now b is what your distance of closest approach or critical distance distance of closest or you can call also call it critical distance okay so we will apply basically energy conservation so what will happen by energy conservation by energy conservation already told you that the kinetic energy before collision this is a type of collision okay i had already told you in the collision chapter that for collision it is not necessary that physical contact should happen okay in order to for two bodies to collide with each other okay listen once again for two bodies to collide with each other it is not necessary that they should undergo physical contact okay 
ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है जरूरी नहीं है कि फिजिकल टच होना चाहिए दो बॉडी के बीच में तभी तो कोलिजन होगा ऐसा जरूरी नहीं है अगर फिजिकल टच नहीं भी हुआ दो बॉडी के बीच में तो भी कोलिजन हो सकता है द एग्जाम्पल गिवन ओवर हियर इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ सच ए सिचुएशन वेयर देयर इज नो कोलिजन देर इज नो फिजिकल कॉन्टेक्ट आई मीन देर इज नो फिजिकल कॉन्टेक्ट बिटवीन दिस अल्फा पार्टिकल एंड दिस पॉजिटिव चार्ज न्यूक्लियस इवन देन इट इज अंडर गोइंग कोलिजन ओवर हियर एट दिस पॉइंट At this point, it is undergoing a collision. Okay. So I had already told this in the collision chapter that physical contact is not necessary in order to undergo collision. So the kinetic energy and potential energy summed together before collision is equal to the kinetic energy plus potential energy summed together after collision because we are considering an elastic collision over here. So what will happen is that. Half m v not square will be the initial kinetic energy. So I will write the initial kinetic energy. So it will be half m v not square, right? Let me write properly. Why the pen tab is not working? I don't know. Okay. So let us write half m v not square. Okay. Then the initially initially the distance was infinity. it was a huge distance initially initially the distance was very very huge okay so as it was a huge distance so what is there in the as the distance is huge so what will happen as the distance is huge so initially the potential energy will be equal to zero then kinetic energy final what is the final kinetic energy or oh, it will reach up to here okay it will reach up to here so you are uh, over at this point the kinetic energy will be zero because it will come to a momentary halt okay it will be momentarily stopped so final kinetic energy is equal to zero and uh, the potential energy will achieve a maximum so what will be the maximum potential energy just think classically so 1 pi upon 4 pi epsilon not q1 q2 over r is the formula Q1, Q2 over R is the formula. So, what is your Q1? Q1 is your uh, alpha particle, suppose. So, 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught. Q1 is your alpha particle, suppose. So, 2e will come. Okay, this is 2 basically. And uh, Q2 is your ze, right? And what is your R? R is your b. Okay, so it will be b. So what will it be equal to? One upon four pi epsilon naught. It will be two z e square over b, right? So what what will what will be your this? This will be about your one upon four pi epsilon naught z e multiplied by two e. Divided by b, one upon four pi epsilon naught q one q two over r is the formula. So this will come because this is your positively charged nucleus. This is for your positively charged nucleus, and this is for what? This is uh, this is for this is for your positively charged nucleus, and this is uh, for your alpha alpha particle. Okay, this is for your alpha particle. So that's how the thing will look like. so what will happen from here from here half m v not square which is equal to your 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not 1 upon 4 pi epsilon not 2 z e square over b okay so 2 2 are 4 will come Two two z will cancel. So, how will it look like? Your distance of closest approach will look something like this. It will look something like this. That it will be your z e square over pi epsilon not m v not square. So your distance of closest approach will look like this. Okay. 
some people also write it to be like this that they keep the four as it is and four as it is okay so some people will also write it like this that they will keep the four and four above and below as it is for some reason they keep it like that but even if you cancel the four and four it's okay okay so i had already told you that b gives you the estimation of nuclear radius over here it is appearing huge over here this b is appearing huge but in reality in reality this will be very very huge okay this is suppose 1 meter so then this will be this will be your 10 to the power minus 10 meter such huge is the distance okay it is very very huge di difference between the two oh, in this figure it is this is uh, hyper uh, hyper magnified this part has been shown very very big in this figure because this is not a uh, figure to scale okay this is not a scale up to scale figure okay the scaling is wrong in this okay dimensions are looking bad in this because we have no other option we cannot draw uh, this uh, area to be only this much okay and this area to be up to here the figure will not go look good so, so that the figure looks good, we have done, uh, this area has been magnified, over exemplified, okay. So, in reality, this area will be of the order of 10 to the power minus 15 or something like that. 10 to the power minus 15 meter around, this area will be like that. And this area will be such a huge area that it will be suppose 10 centimeter or 1 meter like that it will be. So there will be a huge difference between the two areas. Okay, but in our figure, in order to show it properly, we have done this. Okay. Now, B gives the estimate of nuclear radius. I already told you. So just jot down the points. B gives the estimate of of nuclear radius okay so b gives the estimate of nuclear radius and uh, if the target nucleus is light if the target nucleus is light then like over here we have taken heavy metals right over here we have taken very very much heavy metals heavy metals means example of heavy metals are lead silver gold uh, uh, many heavy metals might be there bismuth might be there okay b b i is bismuth if i am not wrong okay so all these can be there over here in the form of this heavy nucleus i am not sure whether the symbol of bismuth is bi or not but it must be bi most probably but in most of the cases we take very heavy nucleus but is, if suppose we take light light nucleus, then what will happen? If the target nucleus is light, okay, means it will be have comparable mass. For example, the lead has 82 atomic number, and this has uh, 82 atomic number, and the mass number is very large for the lead. It is something around 180 okay mass number is something around 180 lead has mass number something around 180 and your mass number of alpha particle is just 4 right so it is super heavy as compared to this alpha particle but suppose this plus ze we have taken some lighter element suppose we have taken carbon okay suppose we have taken carbon c614 c614 we have taken suppose then what will happen if we are taken C614, then this 4 and this 14, 
will be comparable. This 4 and this 14, the mass numbers will be comparable. So as the mass numbers will be comparable, so in that case anomalous scattering takes place. Okay, in that place uh, anomalous scattering takes place. So if the target nucleus is light, then anomalous scattering then anomalous scattering of alpha particle takes place in which a part of kinetic energy of the alpha particle is used in producing transformation of the internal structure of the nucleus. This is internal by the way, okay? This is internal. Structure of the nucleus, okay? So if the target nucleus in case is light, then what will happen? If the target nucleus is light, then anomalous scattering of alpha particle will take place. Because it will change the nuclear configuration of your, for example, if I have taken here instead of these these heavy elements like lead, copper, uh, gold, tin, bismuth, etc. Instead of them, I am taking lighter elements like carbon, nit not nitrogen. Nitrogen is the gas, so we cannot take it. But suppose I have taken boron. Okay, suppose I have taken boron or carbon over here, which have lower lower atomic mass numbers. Okay. So lighter nuclei if I take, then what will happen is that the anomalous scattering of alpha particle will take place in which a part of the kinetic energy of alpha particle will be used in producing a tra transformation of the nu nuclear configuration of the nucleus. Okay. So in case of target nucleus being lighter, there will be change in the nuclear configuration of the nucleus. Okay. Nuclear configuration of the nucleus will change in that case. So you must know this very well that just like electronic configuration, there is also nuclear configuration. Okay. For example, we have electronic configuration for atoms. In the similar way, we have nuclear configuration for nucleus. So in that case, anomalous scattering case, it will be used to change the internal structure of the nucleus. That means nuclear configuration. Okay. Now this calculation part is not there in your syllabus. Taking, taking the finite, okay, taking the, taking the finite size of alpha particle taking the finite size of alpha particle under account it is found that the 
that the unit radius that the unit radius of the nucleus is R not is equal to 1.3 plus minus 0.1 femtometer. So the value of R not comes out to be this. If we take a finite size of alpha particle, <laughs> what is the meaning of this sentence? Okay, don't go into such a depth because questions are not asked in depth from this portion of upsc physics option this particular part that is the methods to determine the nuclear sizes this particular part has been given very superficially and the questions asked are also very superficial in nature so simply mug up this last statement because this in it itself requires a 10 page long theory this will itself require a 10 page long theory so just mug up this last statement everything else you have already understood now we will look at the alpha decay method okay we will look at the alpha decay method so put the heading alpha decay method now friends there is one more thing someone was asking me that sir your content is excellent everything is good but uh, why don't you get uh, much views okay so the reason is very simple beta see this is an educational channel okay this is an educational channel so as it is an educational channel it requires a lot of time to grow okay so see first of all youtube youtube has a huge collection of videos okay so this is a huge collection of videos on youtube and uh, this is a small portion where there is education okay in that education category there is one more small portion where there is upsc and there is in that upsc also there is one more uh, small portion which has physics or maths as their optional so my set is such a small set okay my set is such a small set so that's why the subscribers are a few but it will grow one day it will become the uh, top uh, hit uh, channels of youtube okay it will come amongst those and one more reason is that i don't have video editing skills okay video editing and all those skills i don't have them okay many people make very attractive videos my videos are uh, a lecture of uh, old style lectures blackboard type lecture okay so uh anyways uh, this this video will uh, this channel will be viral one day no doubt about it but at present the uh, views are a few the reason is very simple that serious candidates are very few okay in this uh, uh, in our india the serious candidate for upsc are very few so that's why such pe people are subscribing to such, such channels are very few for example the uh, videos such as dilli ke londe okay there is one video such called as dilli ke londe okay now this video this particular video has got 4 million views okay so this this faltu video which which is going to give you nothing in life this faltu video which is going to give you nothing in life has got 4 million views but our nice videos which require a lot of uh, uh, efforts those get hardly 16 views so this is uh, how the world is uh, made okay but one day when this channel will be uh, hit uh, maybe after i think with this rate i will be able to grow in three years okay so after three years from now this channel will be a big hit you you will look at this okay uh, but it will require three years this dilli ke londe channel will 
दिस दिल्ली के लॉन्डे चैनल विल ग्रो इन फिफ्टीन डेज ओके दिल्ली के लॉन्डे चैनल ग्रो इन फिफ्टीन डेज बट माई चैनल विल ग्रो इन थ्री ईयर्स बिकॉज इट इज एन एजुकेशनल चैनल दैट्स वाई एंड आई टोल्ड यू दैट दिस इज द बिग वर्ल्ड ऑफ यूट्यूब फिर ओवर दैट बिग वर्ल्ड दिस इज सच स्मॉल इज द एरिया ऑफ एजुकेशन देन इन दैट एजुकेशन ऑल्सो सच स्मॉल एरिया इज ऑफ यूपीएससी एंड इन दैट यूपीएससी ऑल्सो वेरी स्मॉल एरिया इज ऑफ फिजिक्स केमिस्ट्री एंड मैथ्स ऑप्शनल पीपल सो आई आई एम ओवर हियर सो आई हैव अ वेरी स्मॉल सेट ऑफ पीपल विथ मी सो दैट्स द थिंग दैट हैपन्स ओके so don't worry my channel will grow don't be disappointed about it that why your views are so few i feel very bad for you okay one student was writing message on whatsapp that i feel very bad for you because your channel has got very few views but you are you are uh, your content is very good but still your channel hasn't got much views so the reason is very simple i told you the reason okay so alpha dk method uh, we will do it in the next class okay so till then goodbye i am feeling very much tired i will upload it in some time okay so thank you very much